Castillejo. <laughs> Arturo Castillejos, 5'5", 135. Don't smile up here, JP. Age 20 years of age, out of Jim O, making his MMA debut out of Belmont, North Carolina. And this is when we start talking about it, Sadiq and Charles, guys coming from around the country to fight here in Manassas, Virginia. Yeah, and you know, Jim O is a very, very good gym. They've really been putting out some top-notch fighters. You know, and I need to take some time to speak to their head coach because I've just seen what he's been able to do with some veterans who come in and, you know, maybe they're one and three as amateurs, but then they finish their amateur career, you know, at like seven and three. And then they go pro and they have success there. So whatever they're doing, whatever is in their system that we were talking about in the pre-fight show, gyms have those systems and processes. These guys are doing it right. Arturo's coming with a wrestling background. He's athletic and he's young. And I think all of those things are going to be interesting when he fights Chris Huang, who, while coming from Aikido, is a strong gym as well, and he's already fought once before. At 29, you know, this is where we start to go into that man strength versus that young athleticism. Sadiq, we've seen Jim O produce some fighters into the UFC. Oh, really? This is not this is not any of their first time for these guys. And to have your MMA debut, Arturo has gone up against some of the better guys in the country. Yeah, and to be honest, whenever you have guys like that in the gym, not only are they pushing you physically, but they have a lot of knowledge to drop on you. Yeah. And the more guys like that you have around you, the easier it is to make the walk when you're actually in the cage. I mean, Sadiq, how many fighters do you help as they come up and they're they're on their way? So that, you just give it countless advice, right? Yes, that's one of the best parts about having veterans at your gym, you know? It's not necessarily how much they train with you physically. It's the knowledge and experience that they could put onto you. Right. Me. You're going to give me some advice because I'm whooping Charles' ass. All right, let's throw it down on the JP. <laughs> and fighting out of the blue corner, it's Chris. Wong. Chris Wong, he's fighting out of Falls Church, Virginia, out of Makito. We're going to see Brent making his way back out here. This is a Bantamweight. He's 135, 5'5", 29 years of age. He's ranked number 27 here in the Commonwealth of Virginia in the Bantamweight division. Yeah, you know, Chris Wong had a tough first fight. That was actually the first uh, MMA event post-COVID. Right? right, so that was a really big event that was really tough for a lot of folks. And keep in mind, that was a time where folks weren't able to train the way they otherwise normally would. So, you know, Chris took a big risk coming out there and fighting in an environment like that against a tough opponent. I'm glad to see him back. Maikido's a great gym. He's got a great coach in Brent Hess. And I'm sure strong adjustments have been made. And the other thing I would tell you is, you know, look, he hasn't fought in a little over a year. I know this guy's been in the gym working on his, his game and improving himself. So, Listen, Chris is getting out there and training with guys like George Billy. Yep. When you start to see somebody like that and you've had time to train with people like that, Sadiq, that's different. Yes, and it's, it's, it makes a lot of big difference because they're close to the same size, too, you know, and they could pick up on each other's game. And George Billy is one of those guys, you know, he's a staple around here. You can't say enough about him. So hopefully he's been able to pass some things on to Chris. And, you know, Sadiq, you were talking a little bit about it earlier, but just those moments where post-practice, somebody's like, hey, Sadiq, you know, you, I saw you hit me with this, and you put me on my back. Like, how did you do that? And you give just, I imagine, even if it's just two, three sentences of here's how, what happened, how it happened, and yes. why it happened. Yes. And next thing you know, they just got, you know, what would be otherwise be like 60 minutes of analysis broken into three minutes yes. of expertise. And that kind of stuff makes such a drastic difference, especially when it comes to conversation about, hey, when I was in a, uh, when I was in a cage, I felt this, I felt this. When I was in behind the scenes, I felt this. When he hit me with this, I felt this. Those little things that you can't get, you can't see from watching TV. The people that's been there before are the only ones that are going to be able to tell you about it. All right, let's get some official introductions as Chris makes his way into the cage. We'll throw it back down to JP. JP, take it away. All right, we've got three rounds of MMA action in the bantamweight division. Our referee, Mike Dolman, fighting out of the red corner from Belmont, North Carolina, fighting for Jim O. He weighed in at 135 pounds, five feet, six inches tall. Arturo Castillejo. Castillejo is 5'5", 135, 20 years of age, out of Jim O. And fighting for Mikito, standing five feet, five inches tall, weighed in at 135 pounds from Falls Church, Virginia, Chris Wong. Chris Wong, 5'5", 135, 29 years of age. All right, JP will make his way out. The referee for this event is going to be Michael Dolman. It's scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Three three-minute rounds doesn't sound like a long time to everybody, but as we get into some of the title fights, some of the, the, the time changes, right? And we start talking about three five minutes and five five minutes. So things are going to change. But three three-minute rounds doesn't sound like a long time. Go out and fight somebody for nine minutes. Ooh, they, both fighters meet right in the middle Ooh. straight away, working the body, working the head. 
And now it looks like Arturo's looking for a clinch. He's trying to get the fight to the ground. Right away, Arturo, he'll, he'll be in the black oh, trunks. He has is, black gloves with red tape. They just coming right out, yeah, throwing both, them. Both guys need to take time to relax and figure out what's going on. This right is now, they're, just, they're yeah. just going crazy. They're treating this like a sprint, and yeah. it's a marathon. But right yeah. here onto the ground, Arturo. You know, oh, man, Arturo stepped right into mount. I liked how he was working the body, going upstairs, and then trying to work that clinch. But good movement here out of Chris. Oh, nice. He lost the mount. He almost had the back, and now they're back on their feet. Still going crazy. This is a heck of a pace that they're setting. Now, you was talking before about how long three minutes really is. These guys are going to feel it. They're going to know it in a minute. <laughs> yeah, they're going to feel it. Oh, <laughs> good that spinning was a great backhand. Spinning back fist. He set that up with a good body kick, too. He went kick to the body and spinning back fist on the same side. I like that. This is a hell of a pace these guys are putting on right here. And you know, one, not for nothing, I think Chris is the one setting it. Uh-oh. Oh, big lift. Here. Big lift. Big nice. As well. Nice. Now he has to focus on control, though, because you don't want to have a big lift and end up in a reverse triangle, which looks like might happen. He's got to get that arm out of there. It's still, he's, and now he's in on the single. Let's see if he can get his head out. These guys are going to be tired. <laughs> yeah, this is a crazy pace, huh? At 0-1 and 0-0, you know, right now both of them are a bit frantic, you know. I do like the excitement, though. And I'll tell you, you know, Chris had fought before, and I think he wasn't happy with how his last performance went. Yes. Performance went, so he's coming out a lot more aggressive. But he's fighting well. He's defending takedowns. He's attacking constantly from all positions. Yes. Arturo will be on top right now, but just barely. He has the black trunks. He has red tape around him. And then Chris, he'll be on the bottom. He has his back on the mat. He has the multicolored trunks, but he has blue tape on those black gloves. One of the big evolutions that's happened in jiu-jitsu in the past couple of years is the leg lock game, you know. And now we're starting to see that transition into MMA. It's just in MMA is so risky just because of the amount of damage that can happen while you're uh -oh. going leg lock. Uh-oh, let's see if Arturo's got enough. He got both hooks in. Yeah, he but has both hooks and he's right on the jaw. But as we saw in that previous fight before, it doesn't matter if you have that chin down. Some people could choke you through that chin. And he's like got he it in now. In. He's got it in now. He's in trouble. Chris doing a good job of trying Arturo's to fight Arturo's in hand. trouble. Chris is fighting that top hand, which is key. But that he's still getting choked. Chong's got to get him out. He's got to start moving. Brent is in his ear. Arturo in charge. He's got it sunk in there deep, CD. So he's doing a good job holding on to that top hand. But some guys are good enough to choke you with just one arm. But right now, I don't think Arturo has the kind of leverage that he needs to get that one arm choke. You know, and he was actually onto something when he was using his head as that second lever. But then he kind of abandoned it. And now you see Chris is out of that choke. Yes. And now if I'm Chris, I have to focus on trying to get my back flat to the mat as much as possible. If can he can hold it on for 10 more seconds and not yeah. give up. With 10 seconds left, he'll be all right. They'll have to see what's going to happen in the next round. That was a heck of a pace that both of them set this round, though. Oh, man. Wow. Listen. This place was holding its breath. Yes. The, the whole entire crowd stopped breathing for five seconds while that was happening. Now, this is what messes a lot of fighters up because of this one minute break. Before, if you're if you're in the gym and they tell you to do something for 10 minutes, you could do it at a very decent pace. But that one minute break is enough time for the adrenaline yep. to settle down. Yep. And now you start feeling like, man, I could train for 20 minutes. But now I'm in here, I'm so exhausted. And that's because of the adrenaline jump that's going to happen right now. Yeah, that's good experience there from Sadiq Youssef. And, it, you know, I'll tell you, I think from Chris, that was really good perseverance in a very bad position where Arturo was just relentless with his scrambles and his pace. And I thought Chris did a really good job of fighting off that rear naked choke, attacking the lever hand, not the choking hand, right? Like, that's a big part that a lot of people take. It takes them a while to learn that, right? Yeah. And then slowly but surely getting that chin in, angling his back to alleviate the pressure. And um, and he was able to get out of a really dangerous situation there. Something I noticed in Chris's corner, too, I think his coaches told him to stand up a lot earlier than the bell. And one that's one of the things that I do find helps a lot of fighters when it comes to avoiding an adrenaline dump. You know, you don't want to relax too much. You want to make sure you still got your body moving. Right, here oh, we go. Nice. Start round two. Arturo oh, nice. takes it right away. Nice level change. He caught the kick. The kick kind of, um, the kick still connected, you know, but he was able to catch it and finish his takedown. Good rubber guard here for the starts of it from Chris. Got to be a little careful yeah, with his elbows. Uh, Michael Dolman, the referee, one of the best in the business, especially in all of, I mean, listen, in the Northeast, Michael Dolman is the guy. Every time you go somewhere, Michael Dolman is probably one of the best referees trying to advise Chris that he cannot keep elbows to the back of the head of Arturo. Chris on his back right now fighting out of Makito. He has those black gloves with blue tape. I like the fact that Chris is looking to push off the hips right away. You know, it's one of the things we was complaining about earlier, but if you're down there, you have to be a little bit more anxious to get up. And that's exactly what we saw from Chris. He pushed off the hips. He was able to work himself all the way up on the cage. 
Now, Arturo still has a good body clinch here, but it's better to work from your feet than it is from your back. Arturo is trying to take control, taking Chris down again with great takedowns. He has been in charge of this thing and very strong, but he has to be careful that he doesn't get reversed on. Yeah, and okay, he's, I mean, Chris is every elbow he throws is hitting the back of the back head. Back of the head. I'm yeah, shocked that yeah. Michael's letting it happen. The, the bad one, it looks like Michael didn't see it because it was on an angle, but he's probably one warning away from getting a point deducted, you know. And when yeah. I say warning, I mean. Oh, he's just, talked to him. Yeah. I saw Michael Doman in his ear earlier in this round trying to make sure that Chris was not banging on the back of the head with elbows or fists. And, and right there again. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough. And what's happening right now is Arturo is keeping his head so low that the only way Chris is going to land those elbows is if it's on the back of the head. So he kind of has to just take that out of the arsenal right now or find a better angle. I was hoping Chris was going to take it and use the, the cage to walk himself up. But if both these guys can stand up, here we go. Oh, Arturo oh, right on his back. I Let's see if he can see sink this in. in. I, he has one He's hook. got it in there deep this time, boys. All right, he has one hook in, but it looks like Chris has enough room to be able to get flat. I think the cage is preventing him from getting the leverage he needs to really anchor that arm. Oh, no, he, he kind of rolled over. This is he's, trouble he's for pretty Chris high, though. Arturo's yeah. pretty high. He's Look at this, Arturo abandons it. Position. What I like about Arturo, though, is whenever he loses a good position, he goes right away to the next position right away. He's not giving Chris a chance to settle. Immediately in on another shot. Right here, he's going to go for a big lift again. And he got another Great one. Take. Wow. Arturo strong, boys. Both fighters right on top of the Jersey Mike's logo. Michael Dolman right in the mix, making sure that everything is kosher with this. Now, Chris is running short on time here. There's only about 20 seconds left in the fight. You know, and it's right. tough because he's been so in active. He's been so active in this, uh, on this bottom position. But I'll tell you, when I see things like this and the constant rear naked choke attempts and Arturo's big lifts and slams, all that energy he's using might still not be enough to get that fight in the uh, get the, excuse me, get that round in the judges' scorecards. Now right. that's a round that definitely goes to Arturo. Absolutely. I think Arturo's won them both right here, right off the bat here. And we'll go into round number three with Chris having a sense of urgency from Makito. If you're Brent, like he's trying to display you, you can see Michael Dolman right now trying to explain that. We get a camera on Michael right here, like right you see it. Brent trying to ignore him. I don't think Michael Dolman likes it when he's being ignored. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. I mean, Michael Dolman's not only one of the best reps, he's a guy you do not want a problem with. But I don't think Brett, I think he's just so focused on yeah, making his guy his ready. Yeah, he's right. probably listening to what Mike said in one ear. He didn't need to, to hear it like another. five times. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like, I heard you the first time. Yeah, well, and, and for what it's worth, he's probably telling Chris, like, hey, buddy, you got to stop elbowing, stop the elbows. Just like Sadiq was saying, like, take that out of the arsenal. Um, that north-south position when you're just going up and straight down, that leads to some issues. And when their head is tucked like that, and the only, like you, Sadiq, you said, the only position you get hit in is the back of the head, you just can't throw it. You just, you got to avoid that position. All right, we'll get the seconds out of here. Michael Doman makes sure the cage is all locked up and ready to go. He checks with all the officials alongside of the cage. Checks with both fighters, and here we go. Start of round number three here in bout Ooh. number now, five. Now, I, I don't know who was the dirty guy in that situation. <laughs> both guys went for a glove touch, but both of them went for an attack <laughs> at the same time. We've seen that plenty of times, especially <laughs> in round three. I see you trying to be tricky, and they just start fighting. <laughs> yeah, but they both did it, so oh, I, yeah. guess, I, mean, I guess hey, it's equal. Two wrongs make a right in yep. this case, you know? <laughs> Arturo trying to do the, uh, just pick his fighter like now, Chris up. Chris has a pretty good grip on his guild team, but he's arching his, he's kind of applying it wrong. He's, he's a little arch, too much space. Yeah, he's arching his back. He needs to crunch to the side, but I feel like now he's lost it. Well, I think that's something you could probably provide good advice on based on last week, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Whenever you have those guild teams, I know so if, you're, if you're not comfortable with jiu-jitsu, it looks like it makes sense to arch straight backwards, but you got to crunch to the side, especially if it's an arm in. Yeah, the arm in especially, just angle over is what the, the great sneak Yusuf is saying here. And he had won his fight last week with that very same technique. So. Yes, sir. 30-second arm in guillotine. <laughs> Patent. Yeah. <laughs> and still no bonus. You What's going on? You got to ask me to use that, everybody. <laughs> man, Arturo's in again. Yeah, Arturo's just relentless on these takedowns, man. I, li <laughs> I, I, I like I, – and to be honest, every time he's doing these slams, you know, he's not getting tired. You know, I like the fact that yeah. he's he's constantly going for it. Oh, and he rolled it in. Oh, I think he's got it in the there end. now. Yeah, this might he's be got the it end. in there now. This is the end here. It's deep. Arturo's got See, both the, arms in there. The difference now is we're not seeing Chris fight the top arm. Yeah, the top he can't arm like do he it. He can't do it. 
This is going to be it here, close to the uh, minute 30 mark. I'm surprised Chris is hanging on. Dude. Me too. I'm surprised he hasn't gone out yet. Yeah. Like, Arturo's probably so, like, what is happening? Why can't I get this in there? That's it. Oh, that's there that. we go. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Wow, that, great that, fight. That was a lot of um, strength from Chris to be able to hold on for that long. Yeah, that was something. And, you know, I'll tell you, man, I thought Arturo did a great job of just constantly keeping up the pace. Sadiq, you had mentioned, anytime he lost a position, immediately went after the next position. He was relentless. Lifts, slams, and constantly going for that back attack. And while Chris defended it, I would say three or four times, it was that last round right there where we're going to see the replay that was just in a little bit too deep. And, you know, one of the details, Sadiq, you could probably see, is he's, yeah. Arturo's using his head now to lock that second hand in place. Yes. It could be a little bit deeper, but that's clearly some good corner work who said, hey, the next time you get that hand there, chase it with your chin. And once you chase it with your chin, it's going to be a lot harder to peel back. Arturo coming away with a big win tonight for Jim O. And, and I thought, I, like I said, I thought Chris did a great job. He's going to be pretty upset that he's lost two, two in a row here, but he shouldn't be. Yeah, I thought that was a great fight, and he's got a lot to be proud of there. That's why another thing that I said, like, it's good to have guys in, the, in your gym that's been there and done that so they can express the importance of not worrying about the victory so much and the amateurs worry about gaining that experience. It looks like JP has the card. Michael Dolman has the fighters. We'll throw it down to JP. JP, give us some results. All right, we got our official decision. In the third round at 146 via rear naked choke, our winner, Arturo Castillejo. Castillejo comes away with a big win for Jim O. He comes all the way up from Belmont, North Carolina, and wins his Cade Zilla debut. What a great job he has done for those folks in Jim O. And like you said there, Charles, Jim O producing winners.